Albert Einstein once said, the important thing is to not stop questioning. Let's see if you guys can make old Albert proud in another edition of Ask Joe Stuff. I should really learn how to dance. Creativity asked, hey Joe, why do humans get that chill down their spine feeling when they experience something eerie? Well, sometimes it happens when you're scared and sometimes when you hear that song that you love and you feel a rush of joy or sadness and sometimes when you're just playing cold, but it's all in your head. Now, whenever we feel threatened or chilly or when someone touches us in a way that we've consented to but find arousing or pleasant, a region in our brains called the hypothalamus sends a signal to our adrenal glands to release, wait for it, adrenaline. Yes, very creative gland name. Among other things, adrenaline can trigger rapid muscle contractions to create heat by shivering, or it'll tug on these tiny erector pili muscles attached to our hair follicles, which causes them to stand on end. Now that would have created more insulation back when we had actual fur. The hypothalamus can also be triggered by rapid changes in emotion, which is why you can also get chills from that one part, that one song. You know what I'm talking about. Near, far, where, Speaking of hair, Calico Cat asks, why does human hair have no growth limit? Well, body hair, like the very short hair on our arms, seems to be stuck short, while hair in our heads seems to grow without limits. And some hair, like pubic hair, is somewhere in between. No pun intended. But it turns out that all hair has a growth limit. It's just that the limit is different for different types of hair. Hair grows in three phases. In the antigen phase, it's actively growing and getting longer. And for an eyelash, that might just be weeks. For body hair, a matter of months, while the hair on our head will actively grow for many, many years. Because if we learned anything in this video, it's that I would not look good bald. Then all types of hair enter a transition phase for several weeks where they go from a growing hair to a dormant hair. And finally, they end their hairy existence in a dormant phase before falling out and hopefully being replaced by other hair. First star says, Saturn's your favorite planet, right? Well, it's mine too. What features make it stand out above the others? You mean besides these and these and these? Besides the fact that it has awesome polar auroras just like here on Earth? Besides the fact that it has a rotating hexagonal vortex on its pole that's wider than the Earth and formed by these intense atmospheric wind currents that would rip your face off? Besides the fact that Saturn's only 60% as dense as water and would float in a very, very, very large swimming pool? Or that its rings are only 10 meters thick despite being more than 150,000 kilometers across? or that it has at least 62 moons, one of which looks like the Death Star, and one of which is tugged on so hard by Saturn's gravity that it squeezes geysers of water hundreds of kilometers into space? I guess besides that, not much. J Anderson 9788 says, I heard you can't see stars in space with the naked eye because there's no atmosphere to absorb the light for you to see it. Is this true? Heck no. Astronauts can't always see stars from orbit, but it doesn't have to do with the lack of atmosphere. They can't see stars for the same reason that you can't see stars if you walk outside at noon, the sun. Now, if astronauts are on the sunny side of Earth, a huge amount of light is being reflected off Earth's surface, and way more light than any stars other than our sun are giving off. Staring into the black space around a bright Earth, an astronaut's eyes just don't have the dynamic range to see those dim little specks of light when there's other sources of illumination around. It's like how it's hard to look out a window into the dark of night when you're in a lit room. And we see this on the moon, too. That's why Apollo pictures are so brilliantly lit, but the sky above them is totally black. And is most certainly not because they were taken on a soundstage in Southern California. Huh? Now, if an astronaut is on the night side of Earth, and there's no light from the moon, they can definitely see stars. Here is some proof. Prospero 101 asks, why does root beer fizz so much more than other sodas? It does, it's true. I love this question, and I just so happen to love root beer. The root beer used to be made of flavor extracts that were steeped from roots and barks, like sassafras, which is why it's called root beer. Now, these extracts contain various proteins and sugars from the plants, and when those are mixed up or experience turbulence, they often form foams. Now, it's just like how waves at the beach often form foams because they're full of proteins and molecules from dead algae. 
Now, anyway, the FDA declared those root extracts to be toxic a few decades ago, so soda makers had to replace them with synthetic flavors. But people were used to having nice foamy root beer that would keep its head just like a grown-up beer. So soda makers added synthetic foaming agents so it would keep that slurpy, slurpy, slurpitude that everyone knows is the best part of root beer. Karen Hart 28 asks, what year is it? Not in the Gregorian calendar, but in the scientific sense, what year for the Earth is it? Now, if we calculate today's date based on the age of the universe from the Big Bang, well, if we average together the results of all the different scientific experiments that have sought to calculate that number, we get 13.798 plus or minus 0 0.037 billion years. Now, that's an uncertainty of 37 million years, which is 0.3%. Not perfect, but it's pretty good. But the whole idea of a year is based on the Earth's orbit around the sun. And like we talked about in this video, we have many ways of defining a year. We definitely can't have years without Earth. So how old is this planet? Based on radiometric dating of ancient meteorites and other really old rocks, scientists have pegged Earth's age at 4.54 billion years with an uncertainty of 50 million years, which is like 1%. That's actually pretty big if you think about it. That means somewhere between the year 4,490,000,000 and 4,590,000,000, aka 2014 plus or minus 50 million years. That's kind of a broad estimate. I'll tell you what, if you need to turn in your homework late, just tell your teacher you didn't know what year it was. I'll write you a note. Bharat Narang asks, can you give some examples where light behaves like waves and where it behaves like particles? Sure, but first I want to remind everybody that you can submit your questions about science or anything else for the next Ask Joe down in the comments. Or let me know if you have an idea for a future episode. You can also find me on Twitter or at itsoktobesmart.com. Now check out these videos from our friend Derek over at Veritasium explaining all of the wave particle goodness that is light. His videos are... Thanks, and stay curious.